What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. On this episode I'm going to hook up my daylight driving lights. If you can see here, what I've done is put LED headlights in. Uh, just cheapy eBay jobs. They normally are for a Jeep Wrangler. They come with daylight driving lights, DDLs. So I never hooked them up. It's a pretty simple job though because it just comes with an extra little lead out the back and all I need to do is hook it up. First thing you want to do when you're working on something electrical is unhook the battery. Okay, so now that the battery's unhooked, what I'll show you is the back of these. So that, uh, basically this cable here just plugged into the stock uh, headlight loom, that was really easy. But it came with this little connector. Now so what I've got to do is run a wire into that and basically run that and the other one here, which is somewhere back under here behind the battery. Might have to take the battery out to actually get to it. Um, this one here and run that to the indicator fuse in the fuse box that sits under the dash. So a simple trick with this is, see so you've got two there, just get a little knife, cut it in the middle so you can get a grip, and then just pull and it opens. So you only need one half, so you've doubled the amount of wire you've got. Next, from the terminal kit, find a connector that will fit both into the plug, which it does if I force it in or push it in a bit firmer. I don't want to say force it because it's not what I'm doing. Um, but you also need to make sure that you also need to make sure that it's going to fit over the wire. So there's two in the kit. One is too small, one's too big. Um, so let's mount the wire onto or the terminal onto the wire. First thing we need to do is cut off some of the plastic so that the brass underneath is exposed. There you go, that's probably enough. Now you just slip this over the top. You can lose it in the engine bay as well. Just twist up the end so it's all going to go in. I haven't done a very good job. And thread it in so you can see it at the front, like so. See it's right there. So you pull it back a bit and then you hit it with the crimp. Slip it in there, nice and firm. I might wrap that up with electrical tape, but we'll just set everything up first and make sure it all works before I get into the finished stuff. Let's run the wire and see how much we need to get over to the fuse box. Once you've located the fuse box, you can go ahead and take it off. I believe flasher is the one we're looking for. There might be different labeling for your car, so you've just got to suss out what means what. There we go. There are all the fuses in there. So just to test it, um, that is, again, as I said, that's the flasher, which I believe is the indicator. So what that means is it's just giving it power or it, it's hot basically when the ignition is turned on. So it's off when the car's off, um, it's on when the car's on, or when the ignition's on at least, if not the engine. Whereas if I put into the headlight, I've noticed with this car, the power is always on. So it's always hot even when the ignition's turned off. So... I've walked away many times from my car with my headlights on and more often than not I've luckily spotted it but once or twice I haven't and have had almost flat batteries when I came back. Luckily I haven't been fully flat but so this one will work. Now what I've got to do is find a grommet or somewhere that I can run it through the firewall. I found a little grommet here that is not really put in properly so I can definitely run if you can see I can definitely run two wires through there so that'll be nice and easy. That's the main wiring harness anyway, so it's in the right spot. And then it will come out through into the cabin just where the pedals are and I'll run it into the fuse box. Yeah, I'll run it behind the grill. I think that'll be a better bet. So if I thread this through here, yep, I thread it through here and just run it behind the grill. 
a little bit less heat to getting at it. Do the same with the other one. Here it is. I'm going to actually start from the fuse box, run it back because um, it was just easier to get the length right. Uh, you can just see quickly here, I've ran this one in front of the radiator, just attached it, I don't know if you can really see it there, attached it with a zip tie, ran it over here, and yeah, as I said, just really easy to get the length right. So if you're doing it, start from the fuse box and it will be much easier. So in the end, to, get the, to keep the fuse box lid on, uh, that was the easiest way. If you can see what I've done there, I've just spliced them together and then wedged them in so I can close the fuse box on top of it. A bit fiddly because I've got limited room under here. That's the way it's going to go. We'll see if it falls out or not. If it does, then I'll solder it in or come up with a better solution. But for now, this should last, I reckon. I think that'll stay in there for a little while. The way the, the lid is on, it also holds it down quite well. Okay, that one's in. Ran up a long day. The other wire ran underneath here to the passenger side. Oop, I'll put one more zip tie. So as you can see, they're very bright. camera's not quite picking it up. Here we go. Here we go. That's what they look like. So, they're very bright. They would have been great as indicators and I've still got to figure that out and I might change it to that. Um, but what I'm going to do is because they're so out there, I guess you could say, I'm going to fit a switch to the dash. Um, but I'll do that at the same time when I fit the electric fan to the radiator because I want a dual switch set up that just be a bit neater. So I'll see what I can find. But that'll be next episode. Until then, have a good one.